Today I'm going to review the book Impact Mapping from Goiko Attic. Let's get into it right now. Hey, I'm David and welcome back to the Agile Broadcast, a channel dedicated to exploring Agile software development concepts, where I make short explanatory videos just like this one. So in this video, I'm going to do a review, a review of this book, Impact Mapping. The author, Goiko Atek, is a software delivery consultant based in London. He's also an excellent conference speaker and an author of several books. But today we're reviewing this one called Impact Mapping. So this book is about a very powerful, simple but very powerful technique called, guess what, Impact Mapping. It's a rather simple but very effective method to make sure we maximize the delivery of value and yet at the same time minimize the effort. Sounds good? Well, keep watching and I'll show you how it works and why it's an essential tool for your toolbox. So let's say you're involved in this project where people say they want some kind of data science platform for data scientists to share data and collaborate more. So with that project in mind, you end up with a bunch of deliverables. So you might have things like inviting people to view, publish your data, having a versioning system, and supporting different data types. Now these particular requirements all share the aim of sharing data. That's the benefit we're after, or the impact we want to see on the users. So now I'm just going to link them up. And you probably have more deliverables you can think of. Now the next part of the map is to think, okay, who are the users, who are the actors that are going to be impacted by that impact? And here it's easy, we just talked about it earlier, it's the data scientist. Now, if sharing data is the impact that we want to see, it's not a business goal in itself. So if you dig a little deeper and you ask why sharing data is important, you might realize what the actual business goal is, which is the next step of the map. And here, as you ask the stakeholders, they might end up saying something like, oh, we want to get, let's say, more insight from data. And that's your business goal. Now that you know what your goal actually is, you can start brainstorming about different ways to get there. This is only just one option. So if you think about the same actors, the data scientists, what else could they do apart from sharing data? Sharing data is a good thing, but that's maybe not enough. So you could think about other things like, oh, well, let's get them to increase collaboration. And you could do that in all sorts of ways. You could imagine informal presentations. Or for example, starting an open source library of tools that are useful for all the data scientists to share. And of course you can start to do the same process with different actors. Let's say the engineers that create the products the salespeople, etc., etc. Okay, it's a little busy now. Uh, let me clear this up. And there's lots of examples on the web, like this one about growing mobile advertisement, or like this one about a game trying to reach 1 million players. So, in summary, an impact map is simply a mind map that links the business goal with the different actors that you may have and then we link the impact on those actors and finally the deliverables that you're thinking of implementing now the map itself is simple and it's not what's actually brilliant about this let me show you what's so powerful with this. Number one, or well, the list of deliverables here is like a backlog. 
the features you actually want to develop. But here, they are all options. And once the goal is reached, you don't need to develop everything else. There's no need to implement the other features. You've reached the goal. And that's how you minimize effort. It's the antidote to the feature factory. It's this mode of working where so many organizations fall into, where you just churn features after features, like a factory, with no link to the business goal. And typically, people want to deliver as much as possible from their backlog. You know, the, the more the better. Here, instead, you want to find the shortest path through the map. The shortest path that lets you achieve your goal and deliver value, because that's what actually matters, not delivering features after features. The second reason this is so powerful is the impact aspect. So let's say you have delivered something from the list of deliverable from your backlog. Now, the question you must ask yourself is, What's the change in the user behavior? What's the change that I expect to see here? What's the impact on the user? Have they changed their behavior? Is there a before and an after the feature? In my previous example, we talked about sharing data with colleagues. Well, did people not share data at all before the features you implemented? Or did they share data differently? Perhaps in a very inefficient way, like with USB sticks or something. And that means you want to have a metric. Something you can measure, a signal that tells you that this is working, a signal that tells you that the impact that we expect is actually happening. And then something you can quantify as well. Let's say you had a way to measure how much data was shared previously, and let's say now we want an increase of 20%. And if you measure that, then you can check. If we only had 5% of an increase, well, that's a bit better, but we want more. So what else can we do from that list of deliverables to increase that? Now, this way of thinking fits really well with the idea of iterative development compared to a purely incremental way of delivering a software piece by piece, where in fact, all the features have been planned and decided upfront. Now, as it happens, I have a great video on incremental versus iterative development. Go and check it out. But wait, before you do that, let me know. If you like this book review, give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comments below if there's another book you'd like me to review. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.